Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. There are plenty of cities around the world with a cash problem, but Dubai seems to evoke a greater variety of conflicting emotions than most. Pride at its flashy skyscrapers, disdain for its treatment of immigrant workers, respect for its massive container ports and communications, concern at its lack of transparency and press freedom. But like it or not, Dubai stands out from the crowd, an icon to some, a nightmare to others. So is it a magnificent dream that stumbled into hard times, or is the underlying concept fatally flawed? Tonight we debate the motion this House believes that Dubai is a bad idea, and you'll decide the issue with your vote. Our panel, of course, disagree fundamentally. Speaking for the motion, Simon Jenkins, former editor of two London newspapers, The Times and The Evening Standard. Five years ago, he was awarded a knighthood for services to journalism and is now a commentator for The Guardian newspaper. And with him, Shala Musabe, an Emirati citizen who founded the City of Hope Shelter for Women and Children in Dubai. Previously, she campaigned against using children as camel jockeys, a practice which was banned in the Emirates in 2005. She now lives in the US, working as a human rights activist. Against the motion, Nasser al -Gaith. He's a lecturer in international economics at the Sorbonne in Abu Dhabi and has advised the UAE government as well as the corporate sector. He's now in demand for his knowledge of bankruptcy and insolvency laws. And with him, Michel Canu, a prominent businessman in the Gulf and deputy chairman of his family's group of companies. He finished school in Dubai and now teaches at the American University in Sharjah. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me call first on Simon Jenkins, please, to speak for the motion. Thank you. This evening we're debating a very limited motion. We're not debating Dubai or the people of Dubai. We're debating the idea which has motivated the recent development of Dubai. Now, um, if there's one thing we know from the credit crunch, it's that um, breakneck, uncontrolled, unregulated capitalism ends in tears. Uh, I'm a passionate and devoted capitalist. I believe in the profit motive and I believe in property development. All these things um, uh, ought to go without saying. What is abundantly clear is that if you don't regulate it, if you don't control it, if you don't, if you don't maintain markets in a proper fashion, they will go out of control. And in going out of control, cause huge waste, huge dis dislocation and huge human hardship. Uh, when I first uh, went to the Gulf in the uh, 1990s, uh, and first went to Dubai and studied it in some detail in 2006, it was abundantly clear that the idea motivating this development was going to end in tears. Um, plenty of people said so. There was no surprise about what happened uh, recently. Um, it was clear that this was a property boom built not on resources or on manufacturing industry or even on um, traditional trading. It was based on odd money and debt. And when you base something on odd money and debt, I repeat, it becomes a gold rush city, it becomes a bubble, it will burst, and it has burst. Now, I don't think uh, Dubai is going to disappear. Um, <clears throat> I think probably uh, in the long term it'll become a perfectly successful uh, part of the UAE. Um, I think it'll be much poorer than it is now. I think it'll become a refugee center for very large numbers of people who um, will become a part of the floating population of this part of the world. And I'm sure it'll have a very lively uh, tourist industry. Uh, much as Atlantic City or Las Vegas does in America. Um, but the, um, the uh, ambition, um, the hyperbole, the hysteria that went on over the past four or five years uh, will seem like a bad dream. Um, it just goes to show that if you allow property development to go at breakneck speed, it will end in tears. It's a mistake. It's a bad idea. I beg to move the motion. Thank you. Simon Jenkins, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> You say breakneck capitalism ends in tears. Who says Dubai has ended? You're talking about one of the most vibrant, successful commercial and tourist hubs in the world today. It hasn't ended, has it? It hasn't ended, no. Um, I think many it's people... undergoing difficulty, but then a lot of places in the world, including London, are undergoing difficulty at the moment. London's many... more broke than Dubai, isn't it, these days? I, I'm mercifully not speaking for my government. Um, uh, I think many people would agree that had it been more cautious, had it been more controlled, had it been better planned, had it not been quite so 
ambitious, indeed fantastic, it would have been a better bet. You've warmed to it slightly because you seem to be in a hurry to write Dubai's epitaph at one stage. You said the towers of Dubai will become casualties, not of human greed, but of architectural folly. Sand will drift around their trunkless legs. Animals will inhabit their basements. Uh, are you rewriting your apocalypse now no, scenario for Dubai? Not one word of it, no. You're not taking any of it back? No. So you think it's doomed? I didn't say doomed, I said it would be a different sort of place from what it is now. But it works, doesn't it? It works, look at it. I mean, it's one of the top 10 container terminal ports in the world, it's top 15 air cargo hubs, top 10 busiest airports. It works, it controls ports in 49 countries. That's something to shout about, isn't it? I don't think it controls them. It has shares in them. Makes them work. Though, and they're looking it? very sick at the moment. Are they? Still, still seems to work, still seems pretty vibrant. If you export your debt to other countries, uh, at this point, Dubai becomes everybody's business. Um, it is unhelpful. It's unhelpful, but uh, look at all the companies that are going there. Look at the number of British companies, 2,500 British companies, 125 companies in the airport free zone alone. It's a, it's a magnet for trade, isn't it? It's N vibrant. None of them are cheering Dubai on at the moment. They're wishing, they're wishing Dubai's debts have been underwritten more securely than they are now. But they're confident that it's going to come up again, and you're not. I'm not, no. All right, Simon Jenkins, thank you very much indeed. And now could I please ask Nasser al Gaith to speak against the motion. Well, uh, the main motion of this debate says, is Dubai a bad idea? And I would throw a question to myself and to my uh, counter debaters. What Dubai are we talking about? Uh, from my point of view, there's two Dubais. There's a pre-2003 model of Dubai and the post 2003 Dubai. I would agree with Mr. Jenkins to the greatest extent that post-2003 model, which I called the real estate adventure model, is failing. That does not mean that Dubai is failing. Dubai is a vibrant city. The pre-2003 model presented Dubai to the world, and Dubai has been there as a business center in the region for the last 100 years. It started in the late 19th century. Uh, and I don't think that this crisis will take all this from, from, from Dubai. A model has failed, an attempt has failed, but not Dubai itself. I don't think it will fail. I think what happened in Dubai, Dubai took a wrong turn on the right path. And they, if they could do this, and I think they should be able to do this, just take a U-turn and come back and follow suit the previous model. Which, which, uh, which, was, which was there. Uh, I don't think that Dubai was treated fairly by the media. I don't think that the media was fair to, to Dubai when initially cheered the model to be followed uh, after the 2003. And I don't think they are fair now when they just declare prematurely, to say the least, that Dubai is, is finished. I, I don't think that uh, du Dubai is finished. Dubai, what is happening is capitalism at its best, not capitalism at its worst. What we have, what, what we're seeing is a correction. Nasser al Gaith, um, nobody likes the media criticizing them, but it's a bit uh, unfair to blame them for Dubai's troubles. They're merely reporting what they see. Yes, I'm not blaming, blaming them for the Dubai trouble. They made the picture so nice. It wasn't that nice. I mean, I'm talking about post-2003. Are you on the right for, side? Of no, the no, too? I'm talking about the, uh, Dubai is not failing. One of the models isn't has the failed. Reason, isn't the reason that Dubai has failed and will go on failing is because it, it misses one important commodity, and that is a structure of good governance. It doesn't have a structure of good governance. I don't think so. It, the decisions rest with one man, not with the law. They rest with one man. Every decision is referred up to him, and if he doesn't like the criticism, he tells everyone to shut up. What sort of basis is that? for a workable model and a workable society in future, being told to shut up because you're criticizing. That's one point, but what I'm... What, well, what good, I, what no, please address the point. It may be one point, but it's an important point. It's the isn't same, it? very, it's very, the, the very same man who made, who made Dubai. Dubai is, is, is a title for how to make everything from nothing in the Middle East. Compare Dubai with its, with its single man ruler, compare it to Iraq. Libya, for example, or Algeria, 
who made well, we found, nothing, we've, we've nothing found, we found it. similarities in the, in the climate of fear in getting people that's to even to, come to this debate and talk about why, it. Why a lot of media outlets won't even come and cover this debate here then tonight because th they're afraid of offending Dubai. Fine, why do you think... Is fear a good bedrock mm, for a society? No, why do you think that all the foreigners from around the world want to go to Dubai but they don't want to go to Libya or Iraq or Algeria? Why do you think that is? Why do you think there's a bedrock of fear? Why is that necessary? And how is that going to uh, I don't provide an impetus for Dubai to go into the future? I don't think it's fear. In it's a maybe state. lack of transparency. And that's one of the questions that's being learned now here. Lack of transparency is different than intim intimidation and fear. Okay. All right. Nasa al okay. thank you very much. Thank again. you. But I now please ask Shala Musabe to speak for the motion. I support the motion as an Emirati. I'm an Emirati national and I've lived there for 26 years. But the past year and a half, I've actually been in America. Why have I been in America? Because of fear and intimidation, because of slander and smear campaigns against me. Because of why? Because of my work defending victims of human rights violations as well as human trafficking, domestic violence, something that uh, they don't want me to talk about. So when I speak out loud about victims of human trafficking and when I speak out loud about the lack of a system for protection of these people, uh, what do I get? I get accused of being a human trafficker in the media. I have six Emirati children. I have, I'm speaking on behalf of the Emirates as a citizen. I've lived there more than half of my life. I have a lot of love for that place. However, it's a betrayal. It, the non-transparency, non -tran the lies, you know, I, it, it's an atmosphere that, you know, when, when, when I speak to the Emiratis about the old days and how beautiful it was, that's the Emirates I know. The Emirates of, of 25 years ago, the Emirates of 10 years ago, the Emirates of 20, 15, even 15 years ago, when it was simple, when it was sweet, when the Emiratis still had their neighborhoods. So basically, my question is, is the Emirates a better place now with all this development than it was before? No. It was so much nicer before. Nice, beautiful vision went wrong, completely wrong. Okay, all right. Shaila Musabe, thank you very much indeed. Um, what do you want Dubai to do? Close up and tell the rest of the world to go away? That would be progress, would it, for, as far as you're concerned? I think that um, I would like to see Dubai get some experienced professional advice. It's I given many Arabs across the region pride in the best and most vibrant international trading hub pride they've ever what? had. Pride at what? Pride at Pride in something that works. Pride in being a player on the international Importing Eastern European stage. women to, to, to be locked up in flats and used as prostitutes, sex slaves. Pride at what? Pride I mean, in a safe environment where people can grow up without being shot at the streets, without being robbed left, right and centre. Police? Pride in things like that. Police imported from Yemen and Sudan and Somalia who don't have any experience in integrating with an international population. Therefore, when I am the first, you know, when I, when, when I have to, to come in contact with a police officer that can barely You're understand asking, what oh, I'm saying. You want saying. every detail correct in the master plan? What is a bad idea about opening the Arab world to different nationalities, religions, idea. and customs? That's what, a wonderful what's wrong idea. With that? Well, that's You're, what Dubai does, doesn't it? Actually. When it opens up in a way that nowhere else in the Arab world does. When you're going to stand, when you're gonna stand you up and that? say, come, 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 but you're not going to say, what are the complications of coming to this country? Gee, you have a common law marriage? Oh, we're, gonna, we're going to prosecute you for adultery. adultery. We're going to, you know, there is no uh, integration Dubai training. has listened to a lot of the criticism that's come its way. It's listened to the trafficking. Uh, the U.S. actually took it off its watch list a year ago. No. Dozens no. of employers it's have had their licenses. Right now. Well, it, in 2009 report, it said it was off the watch no, list. No, it's on its watch list. I'll give you the piece the, of paper from the, the State Department. It's, it's, Dozens of employers have had their, had their licenses the revoked. List. Dozens no, of employers have had their licenses. I think that Dr. They're Anwar cracking down on the illegal... 
ways how, of treating people? How is, how is taking care of those human rights violations going to have any credibility when the, when the founder of a women's shelter and the founder of the first initiative for human rights in the Emirates has been targeted with a smear campaign and can't even go back to her own country All right, Shala, because of that. Shala Masube, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Could I ask now? <laughs> Michelle Cannon, would you please speak against the motion? Let's talk about Dubai. Dubai is the place where every Arab, if given an opportunity, will still look and say, this is a place I want to be. It still is a place that attracts the best and the brightest to date. When given an opportunity, when people think about and consider that we have fantastic Arab cities, whether we're talking about Rabat, whether you're talking about Cairo, whether you're talking about Beirut, whether you're talking about Riyadh or even Doha, Dubai still manages to attract a lot of people to itself. Why, does that, why is that the case? This is a question that should be asked because Dubai is a place where it allows the best and the brightest to grow, to prosper, to benefit. And I'm not talking only from within the Arab world, even from within the subcontinent. When you look at the number of companies that exist in Dubai, from the subcontinent, you'd be impressed. When they think of where am I going to come and set up in the Middle East as a regional hub, Dubai is a place that comes to their mind, the first place that comes to their mind. If I look at international companies, international companies think in terms of a regional position. Where am I going to position myself? Again, Dubai is the place that people think of. And it's a very simple reason for them. It is the place where you have most likely the best communication, best transportation, although I must say there are other cities who are trying and vying hard, and will probably pretty much catch up with Dubai. But for the present time, Dubai has the best of those. It has a very easy way of handling business. It has a very simple and smooth procedure from a business point of view. This is why Dubai is attractive. This is the model that Dubai has, has as a bedrock and this is why people look at Dubai. It is a beacon of prosperity, not only for companies, but for individuals, Arabs and non-Arabs. I strongly hope that you will support our side of the argument and vote against this. Thank you. Michel Cano, you say that Dubai is a place where the best and brightest can grow. Yes. What about those immigrant workers in the squalid labor conditions which have been so much talked about by human rights organizations? Are they allowed to grow? Ask the companies that employ them. This is not... Oh, it's nothing to do with is, you? There's no regulation? Is, there's no oversight? There are reg there's no me. inspection? If I was to give an example the same, along the same lines, I talk about the people in the FDA and the SEC. When they couldn't hold and control the companies in the States, then come talk to me. Our, comp our country... Mr. Cannon, last year... Our country is trying year, really, Dubai's really hard to make sure that these things try to happen as possible. But remember, you're talking about a growth of five years... They, they simply don't do that. Two years ago, which was two years after a major Human Rights Watch report entitled uh, Building Towers and Cheating Workers, you had Dubai's own public health authorities saying that 40% of its accommodation facilities, that's nearly 500 facilities in Dubai, violated minimum health and safety standards. 500 facilities violated minimum health and safety standards. Is that a good idea? Does that make Dubai a good idea? Uh, excuse me. You ha this is a question whether you're holding the city accountable or whether you hold companies accountable. The company is accountable. Well, governments are the supposed, supposed to the govern, govern, aren't the they? Government sets governments the are supposed to look after people. The government and if they care the and judge for people, it would be a different place. The government sets place, the rules and regulations and tries to enforce them, but you cannot you enforce them. You mean tries to enforce them? No country in the face of the earth can enforce all the rules that they have. All the rules? 500 facilities where you haven't got minimum health and safety standards. Once is that a, something to be proud a, of? Once a, no, of course not. But so that you, makes Dubai by a good idea, does it? This, ha this is just one aspect, and I what said this, one this is an aspect that focuses tens purely of thousands on of the companies. It is not... So the government has no responsibility whatsoever? The government has a, has a responsibility to set the rules and regulations and tries, try to enforce them. And Remember, enforce them. Try. Not try, no, and enforce. You cannot. 
I'm telling you, even in countries like the United States, where governments you have governments are charged with enforcing laws. I don't know where you live, but that's normally the case in most it, it, countries. Wherever you go, world. you will have a government that will try to enforce laws. You, they will not succeed in enforcing it all the time. 500 facilities, that's not all the time. Michelle Cannon, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Just a reminder to everybody, we are debating the motion that this House believes Dubai is a bad idea. I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the second row in the purple shirt. Um, hi, my name is Khaled. I'm an Iranian national, but I've been born and raised in Dubai. Uh, my question is for everyone. Um, if Dubai is such a bad idea, then why are all the countries around it following Dubai? Thank you. Simon, Jen Simon Jenkins, would you like to start? Yes, I, I mean, this comes back to some of the points made uh, by, by the opposition to the motion. I think um, it, 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 I repeat what I said at the very beginning, I am not interested in the politics or society of Dubai. It is not my business. I'm an outsider. I'm coming along to say something about a particular ideology, which was the ideology by which um, Dubai was transformed from the state of grace that two speakers at least can recall into something that has become, I think, a sort of a nightmare for, for the rest of the world, not for Dubai itself. Um, the, uh, the, the, the phenomenal success by which you can attract money um, particularly in the climate of the 1990s and 2000s, um, is no surprise. Uh, lots of places attracted vast amounts of money. Um, most of them reinvested it. This Dubai, place did something as well. Dubai it, decided it? to do something. It decided to build colossal buildings. People who build colossal buildings into which there is no, no, no use as yet, nor I believe will there be a use, are going to fall on their face. New York New, didn't. New, New, York, New York didn't. New York had a hinterland of the American Empire. Um, New York also had, a, a, so to speak, a vast population lined up behind it. Um, Dubai was an idea, I and mean, the reason why this motion is expressed as it is, it was an idea for growth. It was an idea for growth not based on oil resources or gas resources. Um, it was an idea for growth based in some sense on the model of Singapore or Hong Kong. Um, I just simply think it went far, far too fast. And when you go much too fast, you fall much faster, and that's what's happened. Michelle Kennedy, do you want to come in on that? It still doesn't take away from what Dubai is. I mean, I do agree that there are some things that should not have happened the way it happened. But still, you, you're, the question that's being is that you're judging the city, the whole city is being judged, at least by this panel, and by the, by the, uh, the ladies and gentlemen sitting out there, whether this is a good idea or not. I will ask you the, the, the very simple question. As an alternative, Dubai is a viable alternative to two things which are two diseases as far as I'm concerned in the Arab world, nationalism and extremism. And if I don't have Dubai, I have a problem. Okay, I want to go back to the question if I remember. My question was not answered. I asked why, why are all the countries such as Doha, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, why are they all following Dubai's model? They're, they're, because they're not. They're not. What do you mean they're not? Look they, at all the buildings. They, they, they are not look trying the to build look the at, biggest building on look earth. Look at Emirates no. Airlines and Qatar Airways. Look at the train station which Dubai built, and then one month later, Qatar gives the same similar plan, just like Dubai. Well, I, the, the lesson you get from Dubai, which is the same lesson as we get from the credit crunch, is regulate your market. Don't go completely crazy. Don't allow one man's vision to dominate the sanity of the marketplace. Make sure the market works. It doesn't become completely mad. So are you saying, the whole, so are you saying the whole Gulf region is a bad idea? Sorry? Are you saying the whole Gulf region is a bad idea? No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Okay, Nasser, Nasser al -Gaith. I, Dubai is different. Yeah, okay. yeah. Nasser talking, al -Gaith. talking about visionary people, uh, history has been made by visionary people. H history has been made by people who, their counterparts, think they're fools. And 50 years later, they've been celebrated as... But as, not as always. As, Sometimes they remain fools. Not always. Fools, not, don't always they? not always. Not always. <laughs> but to say that the Dubai idea is bad is to say that free market and is with its visible hands is a bad idea. To say capitalism with this celebrated self-correcting mechanism is a bad idea. It, it means that it's saying that globalization, market integration is a bad idea. That's what it means because Dubai is presented that not is the best picture. I'm not claiming that Dubai is presented that in the best picture, but it's the best possible picture, especially in the Middle East. People now have hope in the Middle East instead of looking west or looking east to find hope, to find light in economic development and prosperity. Okay. They need to look within the G, within, within the Middle East, and that's All Dubai. All right, I'm going to take a question from the lady in the front row, please. 
Uh, my name is Shweta, I'm Indian. Mr. Simon Jenkins. It has been announced today that um, Nakheel is gonna pay its $4.1 billion Sukuk obligations that was due today in the next 14 days with the support of the $10 billion bailout from Abu Dhabi. Now, doesn't that seem like a stepping stone to make everything right? Dubai has every, Dubai has excellent retail banking system, it has an excellent transportation system, it has excellent education, excellent culture, and isn't, you, aren't your arguments a very, very loose ground to say that the concept of the entire city is a bad idea? Okay, I'm going to let Shala Musebi have a go at yes. that Yes, okay. Let's just speak to that. Let's speak to Dubai has an excellent education system. Let's just ask, is Dubai better off now than it was in previous years? Is Dubai actually respecting the rights of the national people? Um, while I was, I moved there as a very young girl. Um, in 19, I visited there in 1980 and I moved there in 1984. As I lived there for so many years, I watched as you know, these compounds popped up and the development went up everywhere. And, and in, the, in the expatriate neighborhoods, there was all kinds of beautiful international schools with playgrounds and, 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 and speed bumps so that their children wouldn't get killed. However, in the national neighborhoods, there was no speed bumps. In fact, there was no streets. We had to live with sandy roads while we were building our houses for years and you years. You want to go back to that? And not only that, I would like to go back. Not only that, not only that, the government schools, shabby old schools with cracked walls, unit air conditioning that sometimes worked, sometimes didn't work, overcrowded classrooms, the teachers, God bless their souls, God bless their souls, would have to spend from their own pocket because they okay. wanted to make the right. How do, right. let, let me hear from the question. How do you Come like on. this call to the good old days? I'm, I'm sorry, on. but when you're talking about the, the government schools, it's not, it's not like it's exclusive only that to Dubai. Is their I'm right. sorry, no. But it's that the case. That's right. the case. No, it's not. No, excuse me. Can you let the education. question just come it's back? It's not exclusive only to Dubai. There are a lot of private schools also in Dubai, excellent schools, a lot of universities. I'm sorry, but. What comes first? I'm, I'm a UAE national. My children have a right to an education as UAE nationals. So I understand so that you're you do an expatriate. Have... You get lots of money in your package. I have six children. I'm what? supposed to pay out of my pocket. It doesn't come in my package. Okay. I'm a All UAE right. national. I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the uh, third row there. Dr. Nasser, you spoke that media wasn't fair to Dubai. Mr. Michal, you spoke that everybody would like to be in Dubai. And it's a place to grow and to prosper. It's a beacon to prosper. What about the 160,000 migrant workers in Dubai that are suffering every single day with less than $2 a day to live and to try to live to actually build Dubai? What about those people? I would like to take that. If, if, if Dubai was a good idea, and as you were saying that it's a place to grow and the place, a beacon of prosperity, what about the people who are okay, helping right. constructing this okay, place? Okay, let's let him answer the question. You, you talked about 160,000. What's the population of the UAE? Five million? So the balance, 490 something million, what you call, uh, 4.9 4 million, are benefiting out of Dubai. I'm not saying, I'm not discounting that these people have a, an issue or have a problem, but this is a company issue. I have a, the government's job is to put regulations and to try to enforce it. But at the end of the day, Why it's is a company. I'm, it's, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. That is an okay. issue the government has to take okay. up. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to the point. You're talking about 100, 160,000 versus 4.9 or 4.8. It, uh, it is not an excuse to or, say that, that the population not, of the it's not Emirates an excuse. is, is 5 million. If I was to use a pure on mathematics, this is standard of deviation. But I'm telling you, you're talking about 4.8 million people who are benefiting out of Dubai. And, and Dubai one, is still... 160,000 people it's, are suffering every single day to build Dubai. The issue, what about those the, people? The issue is very simple. They have an issue that they have to take up with their companies. I, you can, I, I can't mm -hmm. come and legislate everything in your life. I cannot okay, do that. Si Simon Jenkins, you want to come in on this? I think it comes back to the earlier question, really. Um, I would love it to be the case that Dubai was growing organically, steadily, as a vibrant community, 
in which there were no buildings wasted. There were, there were, a quarter of the world's cranes weren't in Dubai. So many people weren't being sucked into live on what are clearly slave wages. Um, I would love it if this were, what I have to say, is a normal, very, very prosperous trading city. It has, it has gone a little mad. It's the idea that's gone a little mad. There's no need for it. This could have happened calmly, quietly, in a regulated okay. market. It's uh -huh. the idea that was bad. Nasser al I mean, with the, with the violation of, of labor rights argument, I've heard this a million times. Now, these labors, they came based on their free will. They were not slaves that were you know, taken from Africa no. to, to America. Let, let me finish, please. Let me That's finish. If they are li living on $2 a day, they're no. coming from a place where they don't have food to put on the table of their children. No. That's one thing. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not defending the violation, violation of your, uh, labor rights. What happened in Dubai after 2003, couldn't hear this before 2003. After 2003, everything went so quickly. People lost control. The government lost control. I can say that, it's and it's idea. improving. Wait, it's improving. If you see it today, if you see it five years, five years ago, it's totally different. It is, it is okay, improving. Right. No, it is improving. You have to be fair with yourself, Rasha, uh, Sharla, so and you I have out? to be fair. It's improving. There's okay, let's, quite say, an let's, improvement. Let's, let's, let's say something. Let us say something. Okay, those laborers and housemaids and exploited uh, victims of, of abuse are in fact trafficked into Dubai. Now that is not Dubai's fault. However, everybody is trafficked those, into Dubai. Yes, mainly five, hundred, five mainly, million workers trafficked into Dubai. May, well, from my from my study, the what agents, study? the agents. From my research, I've researched this. The agents, I have researched. Do, all, do you have a maid in your house? The agents. Was it trafficked into your house? Listen, the agents, the agents go. My maids, my maids are treated like family members. They've been with us for 20 years. Everybody says that. He's by asking the way. for the basis of your survey. Maid. When it comes I, to his maid, for the everybody past, says that. For the past 10 years, I have been doing for, for the victims that I have taken care of in my shelter and the victims of labor exploitation that I have interviewed, and I have interviewed more than I mean a few thousand of them. Okay, according right, to okay. my according to my study. The victims are trafficked into the Emirates by agents who put them into deep debt. Lady over there, you have a question. I'm from India. My question is for the speakers against the motion. So as you've said, Dubai is undergoing massive growth, and I agree. But don't you think that this massive development that encourages workers, thousands and thousands of workers from several nationalities, don't you think that will dilute your local Emirati culture in the long run? Aren't you worried about losing your culture? Thank you very much, Jesse. You want to, you want to Michelle Kamen, why don't you do this? Um, of course, again, you have to take into consideration many, many different aspects when you're talking about growth. There's the economic side of it, there's the political side of it, there's the financial side of it, there is the social side of it. And the point you're talking about is the social side of it. Now, if I look at the majority of the people coming, where are they coming from? I would say from the Indian subcontinent, and I think I'll be fair in doing that. I look at the culture of the Indian subcontinent, it's really not that far away from our culture. There might be some nuances and some differences, but let's face it, there is such a strong bond between the, the Arab world and the Indian subculture. I wouldn't really worry too much about that. Here's the voice of the nationals here. They've lost their neighborhoods. They've lost their language. They've lost their culture. They've lost their identity. We had beautiful neighborhoods before. My mother-in-law can't even go outside because she's so intimidated. She, okay, she Michelle, can you answer, answer that point? About, answer she? that point about the neighborhoods. Well, neighbor, listen. Everything evolves. Yes or no? Do you agree? Everything well, evolves. There the should United, be more preservation. The States, excuse me. The United States neighborhoods in the United States in New York and in the turn of the century are not the same as the turn of the century. Okay. All this right. was. So that's a, that's a three Sanjay, words. Sanjay, 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 you don't want to come in and start. Okay. Do you think multicultural society don't exist, or it's a bad idea? Multicultural society is great, mm -hmm. with respect and preservation of what you have right there as well. Okay, gentlemen at the back. My name is Mohammed Mahdi. I'm What's Pakistani. My question is specifically for Mr. Kangu. You seem to think that uh, Dubai is a haven for the con modern businessmen. You say that people can come here and grow and prosper. Please explain to the, uh, my question to you is please explain to the audience how a state that has just borrowed 10 billion US dollars from Abu Dhabi can, uh, can build investor confidence. Please explain how this is building investor confidence in the region. Uh, this question wasn't asked a few, a few years ago when Dubai was starting. 
Uh, just because there was a, f a global financial crisis doesn't mean that Dubai's model is unsustainable. Now, I will agree with one side, with one aspect from the other side, from my opponents, in that I don't really believe that we should have done it in 15 years, maybe 50 years. But still, is it a viable business, a viable proposition? I think it is. Is Dubai going to be able to come out of this one? I think it will, be it by the help of Abu Dhabi or by the help of whoever it happens. I will tell you if, you, are, if you are in a business and all of a sudden your business turns sour against you, do you not go and borrow from the bank? But how Sam, much borrowing? Sam, Sam, how Sam much Jenkins. borrowing? Sam Jenkins. Well, there's a serious danger of us agreeing, uh, which would be a disaster for the motion. <laughs> Um, 15 versus 50 is the essence of this debate. Yes. But the idea, the I'm idea sorry, was I 15. On that point. I know, I'm sorry, I disagree. That's not, that's not, that is not the essence of the point. The essence of the what point is, is whether Dubai it, as a whole is a good idea. Well, Dubai as a whole has, okay. been, has proven okay. time let him, and time let him, like let him, let him have well, a say. I, I, a good by idea. the way, what, but the, the essence of the idea was to break through what might be called gradual organic growth. You rush for growth by building huge amounts of buildings. That was the idea of present-day Dubai. And someone asked a question about whether it isn't all just bad publicity. That's rubbish. Every state thinks it gets bad publicity. Confidence is the key to capitalism, and confidence has been destroyed, briefly maybe, but it's been destroyed for the time being, by going so fast for growth that you have a big collapse, and then you can't even tolerate people debating it. Question. In 18 months, if things turn around and Dubai all of a sudden is back on track, do you think the same bankers who are today arguing against Dubai will not be begging and knocking on the door saying, please, take, can we take, give you I'll, money? I will take you out to dinner if that proves to be the case. Fine. <laughs> I look forward to enjoying a very nice dinner. Thank you. Okay. Do we have, uh, do we have any other Emiratis in the audience? Oh. You, sir. Uh, hello. My, uh, my question is to Ms. You are from? I'm from Dubai, from Zabi. My question is to Ms. Sharla. She said that Emirati nationals are like being mistreated, in mistreated. all over Dubai. No, or their, I didn't their say women that. are being used as sex slaves and prostitutes. I mean, I've never heard anything like that of in course. my life. You would never about hear about Dubai. It. Can, can he just? I've never heard please. anything about that. You wouldn't hear it. You know why you wouldn't hear it? Because your bloody media is just so. You in the media. You don't hear anything. You don't yeah, hear the I'm, truth. I'm not talking you, about the media. The I'm me talking about me as an Emirati it? national, How you know, you living in a society with Where lots of Emiratis. I've could never you, heard could anything you let like him that. Finish, please. It's not could about the media. Finish? It's about the Emirati society that I'm Where living in. Where would you hear it from? Where from, would you hear it? From any person that I'm living with in the Emirati society. It's hidden. It's 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 all. Everything is propaganda and hidden. There are not proper systems. There's nothing hidden between the society. Oh, yes, there, there is. Charlotte Musebi, will you let him finish? Maybe, maybe it is between the media, but it's Look, not between the society. You're not talking to a kid here. I've lived there for 26 years. I'm an Emirati. My husband's and I've, from And I've Emirati. lived there my whole life, but I've never seen or heard anything about that. See that? There you go. I've never seen or heard anything okay. about it. Okay, has a different experience. I'm talking about my point of view. Okay. Now, you, Charlie, you, you say it's hidden. Well, it's hidden. How, how can you hide a common practice that's widely practiced by a community? Because they... Can you, can, how, how can you hide that? They don't report the truth. You don't have to report it. If it's common practice, everyone will have two eyes and two ears well, to see it and hear it. I don't know where this young man has okay. been, but if you All go right. into Dara, they're everywhere. This if you go to Burj they're far. everywhere. Okay, I'm going to take a question from uh, you, sir. Yes. I'm Katri, and my question is for the proposition. Um, can you, pl and, um, especially the lady speaker, how are any of uh, the comments or propositions you've made today unique in any way to Dubai? It seems that everything you said relates to not only the Middle East, the Gulf region in particular, but every em emerging nation. Well, the answer to your question is, how is it different that if I go into a police station in the United States with a victim of domestic violence, the state presses a charge against the man who committed violence against that woman. Emergence the police okay, does not... Okay, that's a question of combat. Please, emerging countries, you're talking about the United States. I'm talking about rapidly growing yeah. economies. Okay. Okay, yes. Simon Jenkins, come in. Can, can, I, I, I find th this part of the conversation very difficult. It is not my business. I'm a foreigner. I do not like commenting on other people's countries or how they run their countries. It is literally not my business. I wish my own country wasn't pretending to run other countries at the moment throughout this region. I'm appalled by what we're doing. Um, the, the sinner 
does cast stones in his own house as well as on other houses. You're absolutely right, Nasser. Um, I do think, however, and this is a very, very tentative suggestion apropos of the motion, that the pace in which you, um, I believe, recklessly allow your city to build, literally build, invites problems that wouldn't be there if you were growing organically like most cities do. And I do think it is one of the faults of what happened in, to the idea of Dubai, if I can come back to the motion, that it, it actually produced within itself these stresses and strains that, were, that do seem to be peculiarly unjust. I'm going back to the question. I apologize for taking up so, so much time. I'd rather this goes out to the audience. However, I just come back to the point. If I understand you correctly, then you're saying that rapid growth, regardless of where it is, is a bad idea, as opposed to Dubai in itself is a bad idea. <laughs> However, that's not the motion here today. Please, uh, if you could tell me what specifically and what you're proposing today relates to Dubai, because if I understand correctly, then you're saying that the rapid growth in Qatar and Kuwait and the rest of the GCC is also a bad idea. No, Sam no, Jenkins. No, no, no. <laughs> Forgive me if I was drawing a, a false distinction, but I mean, I do think there's a distinction here. Um, all, over the, all over the world, there are the wreckages of cities that expanded too fast. And they all incurred horrendous social disruption because they expanded too fast. There is a difference between expanding within what might be called the terms of your own market, which I think applies to most of the Gulf. Most of the Gulf is very rich with oil, for instance. And expanding on the basis of one man's vision of dreams of architectural glory. That is a distinction, and it has produced problems. What is wrong? Seriously, what is wrong with wanting to have the best educational system possible. Now, I'm not saying whether they achieved it or not, but wanting it. What is wrong with wanting the best healthcare system on, uh, 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 available? What is wrong wanting to have the best financial system available? Now, I'm not saying that they managed to achieve it, but I'm saying that's what they want. That was the goal, that was the aim. Wanting those things for the citizens, and the benefit is for the non-citizens as well, where everyone can benefit out of it. Can I think that come should back be on that something point? we should all aspire no, to. I totally agree, nothing is wrong. Um, my country at the moment uh, wanted the best banking system in the world, thought it got it, wanted the best education service, wanted the best health, health service. As a result of wrecking its banking system, it's going to have a poorer health service and a poorer education service. These things are linked. If you don't control capitalism, it will run away with itself and it will mess you all up. Okay, I'm going, to take to a, I'm going to take a question from the lady in that room. Hi, I'm from New York, but I live and work in Qatar right now. Um, this is putting the financial situation aside for a moment. Is Dubai a good city with a strong Arab culture and heritage, or is Dubai just a Las Vegas on steroids? Nasa Al Gaith, would you okay. like to uh, answer that? I mean, I'm an Arab. I lived, born and lived in Dubai. I, I think my, my culture is very good. Yes. But it's a culture among, among among other cultures. Do you want a, city, a whole a one culture city or multicultural city? What do you think? Uh, could I also add on to this one? Would you like me to impose Arabic on you? Would you like me to force you to wear what we have to wear? Would you like me to force you how to, drink, to drink the way we drink? What do you want? We are talking about, we are talking about a multicultural city that is a beacon to the, even within the Arab world, which Arab are you talking about? Are you talking about North Africa? Are you talking about Yemen? Are you talking about Iraq? Which Arab are you talking about? Please be more specific on that one. Okay, I'm gonna take a question from the lady up there. Uh, good evening, uh, I'm from France and I would like to ask a question to the opposition side. Um, if you think Dubai is such a model, as in, um, why has it taken uh, its responsibility in environment? environmental issues seriously. Thank you. That's a question that hasn't come up so far. Environmental who responsibility, has, you have, the largest, you have the largest carbon who footprint has done per head of the has, population. Who has done taking the environmental responsibility in the world? That's not a fair question to, to, to question Dubai environmental policies. Yes, who did? Who did? Tell me. China, United sake. States, Europe. Every Who time did? they ask Nobody a question did. about Dubai, you now, divert now, onto don't play this carbon carbon footprint in the world. Don't, the head don't, of the don't play this. Don't Imagine play this, this environmental car. Please, please, please. This what tiny little country has yes. a. About what? You had something so to say. Pollution. Yeah, I mean, who don't I'm play this? To, I'm trying to give you a platform Thank you. here. Don't play this environmental car. Fight through it to get you one. You know, this is. I think. I don't think it's a good idea for you to play this environmental card. Nobody had dead. 
take his role in, in saving the environment. Everybody Mich is polluting, Michelle starting Cannon. from China to everything. Michelle Cannon, uh, please answer the question, somebody. Just, just to give you an idea, um, would you say that Europeans are very much environmentally conscious? Uh, there okay. is the... If you, ask, if you come to Dubai and see the number of SUVs that exist in Dubai and who owns these SUVs, and then come and tell me, what about the Europeans, what you call them, how they affect the environment? Okay, a quick question from the gentleman in the third row, please. Hi, my name is Salar Iftikhar Lone from the States. Um, my question is for Dr. Nasser. Um, earlier in the evening, you said that countries in the Middle East now have a beacon of hope in Dubai, and they no longer have to look to the West. But what beacon of hope can other countries in the Middle East have when Dubai, or this beacon of hope, as you say, has come crashing down right in front of their very eyes? Well, I don't agree with the final statement you made, but I think you can learn from the success of Dubai as much as you can learn from the failure of Dubai. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that you can learn from its success and you can look at the amount of uh, Again, propaganda and human rights cap capitalism at violations best. and say, where did we go wrong? Thank you. We've come to the point, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to vote on the motion this House believes Dubai is a bad idea. Um, before you use your voting machines, let me just explain how they work. If you want to vote for the motion, that is the side represented by Simon Jenkins and Charlotte Musebi, it's button one, the yes button. If you want to vote against the motion, that's the side represented by Nasser al Gaith and Michelle Kanu, it's button two, the no button. Whichever button you want to press, would you do it now? There's the result. 38% for the motion, 62% against the motion has been resoundingly defeated. High All five. it remains for me to do <laughs> is to thank our distinguished panelists for coming here tonight. Thank you to you, the audience, for your questions. The Doha debates will be back again later this month. Till then, from all of us on the team, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night. Mm -hmm.